what I am going to do is talk about the Google Analytics Enhanced E-Commerce Platform. It's something that, that launched within the past year. Um, and so my goals are to go deep, right? Really understand the in-depth technical core of the platform, some tactical implementation examples of how to use the data and what the data is going to look like, and my opinions on, on the way it works. Okay, so there's a number of different uh, types of reports and information. Um, we're gonna start with something called product lists, okay? Product lists are ways to understand displays of lots of different types of products. Imagine you walk into a store and you see different departments and you see a different selection. So that could be on your site as a category page, your search results pages, the cross-sells and upsells and other lists of recommended products or things that you might want to add, promoted products that are, like, are on the home page. Okay? Now, with enhanced e-commerce, one of the things that is really nice about technically about the platform is that it's able to do impressions. There's this whole new scope of data, right? Until now there was user level data, session level data, and hit level data. Now there's another data scope in Google Analytics known as product data, okay? So um, you, a bias that you'll see almost all of the, many of the implementation examples are gonna just be Google Tag Manager, okay? So they, they're kind of like um, bread and butter together, so don't, don't be so surprised if we're gonna see a data layer showing the different types of products that are displaying when I'm looking at a product page. It's going to have an ID, um, it's gonna say the list, where am I looking at this sort of product, and the data that's gonna get passed back into Google Analytics is going to tell me information about the product. Um, these letters and numbers are representing in the data that is sent to Google Analytics the which impression list is it on the page, um, its name, its, its position and item of the product itself that people are seeing. Right, we'll go back um, to products. Is it this hat, this hat, or the other hat? And what position was it in when it displayed? Okay? So that's a big plus, this ability to do Im impressions. It's going to be able to allow you to answer questions like, hey, show me all products that were displayed on a particular page that are almost out of stock, right? Assuming that you're passing in the stock information that's related to the product. And we're gonna talk about how to expand the standard dimensions with, with some custom dimensions to really get a full view of your inventory, okay? Um, one important way that I like doing that is through the use of data import. Again, there's a new product scope, so you set your data schema to be four products, and that allows you to map to the primary key of the product SKU the additional information about the product. Now the reason why we're doing that here on category pages is because Google Analytics um, has limitations like uh, of sending the amount of data that it can receive in a hit to eight kilobytes. So if you have showing a product page of 60 products and you're telling the name, product ID, all these lists of products you know, the size of the amount of data that will be sent on the page view will be too big and it will fail, right? So one way to work around this is to s upload your rich product data that is descriptive, the dimensions of that data, using the data upload. Here, I'm, what I'm mapping to is the product ID, and then I'm getting the product category, its full product taxonomy, its brand, and other custom dimensions. Here's something called a promo sticker, which is identifying if it's a new product or it's on sale or something like a little sticker that you see on the product on a, on a category page. Okay? Now this custom dimensions, expanding them can be used for any way that you think about retail or your products in terms, in terms of the structure that you're, that you're doing in e-commerce. So it could be reviews, um, information about margin, information about um, who's the distributor, the warranty on the pro product, the size, et cetera. Whatever's important to your data is some way that you'd like to fill it out, okay? Now back to this idea of a product list, okay? Um, that could be a product list that we're seeing on, let's say, a blog post, right? Oh, you're reading about surfing? You could buy a shirt or you could buy a wetsuit. Um, if you're getting the shirt, you might want to have a cross-sell and you might also be interested in these other shirts. Um, or a Hungarian example, if you're buying Chinese checkers, um, in this case, the recommendation engine was, my Hungarian's not great, but I think this is a car auto, you know, a tuner, and some flags. That's really important to know, like, if I'm looking for a, a game of Chinese checkers, why are they telling me that I might also be interested in a car tuner or flags, right? As, as opposed to, you know, upsells, which may be a better way to, this, is, are my upsells working? I want to buy ilovesuperweek.com. Okay, from GoDaddy. 
And they're saying, well, don't just buy I, I Love Super Week. Make sure that Zolli doesn't know that I was the one who bought it by adding a uh, private domain um, or adding other things to cart like search engine visibility, which is important for, for Super Week, of course. Um, in terms of the way that the data then gets into reports for product lists, we're going to um, have the list name, the how many impressions it had, right? how many times it was viewed, and its clicks and its click-through rate. And we're going to see that all the way down through what we're going to talk about, the predefined funnel of e-commerce. Predefined, whatever that means. We'll talk about that. Impressions. Again, impressions throughout the e-commerce platform are describing the, the, the choices that the, that the consumer can make. I'm being offered these products on, on this list of cross-sells, okay? The actions are things that the decisions they made. I've chosen to click on it and go from the product page to the category page, okay? So impressions and actions translate into choices and decisions that users are making, okay? So the decision here is I clicked on a product, and you can, again, see this by name, by its product taxonomy, by its brand, and you'll be able to see on a category page in this example, you know, the, the products that have the highest click-through rate into the next step, ostensibly, which is on their product page. And you can even see it on the position level, okay? So what do we do with this? Um, I was speaking with Doug last night, and, and I entered this because it's great, right? Re recommendation engine optimization. In other words, that car tuner that I saw for the Chinese checkers, Maybe I don't want to show that. Maybe I'll show other interesting children's games for Chinese checkers, and I can actually see which products were being displayed. I get the impressions of the products for the cross-sells and the upsells. Um, category pages and looking at CTR, I think that can have some impact on merchandising and placement within those category pages, but not completely. I think that we'll look at sales data, which is going to be more impactful. Um, and one other thing to consider, um, speak to me afterwards to kind of get this, because it, it took me about a week to figure it out, exactly what they meant by revenue from the product list being a last action attribution, right? In short, that says that when I see a product on a category page, okay, I got the impression. And then I looked at that as I didn't find what I want. And then I search for a product in the search bar, and it comes up with a search results page. And the same product actually showed on both of those results. It showed on the category page and showed on the search page. If I click on the product on the search page and then add it to cart and then check out with it, that purchase will be attributed as a purchase to the search results page and not to the product page, that I, the, the category page that I originally saw that product list. Okay? Moving on in, in e-commerce, we're looking at products now. I've had my options of products. I've now viewing. Again, an impression. The impression is the view. I'm given a choice. You know, do I want to pretty much add this to cart in this sort of situation? The data that gets sent to um, Google Analytics is the same data model, product level, PR product. One, because it's one product on this page, and I can describe it by its price, its brand, and it's taxonomy, which is I really, really like the, the fact that you have a five-level product taxonomy, which they call the e enhanced e-commerce categorization, okay? So the product is viewed, um, and in the reports that, that, that come out of this, we can basically segment by any dimension, right? I can see either the, the product level, its brand, and the, the most Im important metrics to me are the newer metrics of cart to detail rate, and buy to detail rate, right? How often am I adding a product to the cart in relationship to, to how often I see it, okay? And my look to book ratio, right? Which has been you know, used for a long time in the analytics industry, but now is available in, in Google Analytics as a standard metric, okay? Um, so those are describing in point two here that propensity to purchase, right? Now that, again, that's not new in, for analytics, but it can be new for a lot of people who didn't have that information. So for uh, marketers you know, who might not have the savvy to, to work with an analyst or have enough resources on their team to have the analyst tell them what is their propensity to purchase because they didn't do that implementation, here it's now out of the box, and I really like that. Um, a critique I have is that these are still based upon the idea of a view. So every time somebody sees a product, it's going to divide the number of, let's say, add to carts by how many times that product was seen overall. I don't think that that describes user behavior. Like, if I pick up a shirt 
and then I pick up another shirt, and then I pick it up. Each time that I like, am looking at it or comparing it, I don't think it's just, I'm, I'm still in the process, right? So I think it's still, at this point, the best to calculate your metrics against unique, unique page views. So the number of add to carts by the unique page views for that particular product. Again, in order to get these, that level category three needs to be back to the hit. So it's not using product level data because these are not unique. They're not deduplicated, which is, I think, a problem in, 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 the, in the platform. Um, my buy to detail rate is going to be, again, I can see the, the, the relative rate of purchase for sweaters right, by dividing the number of purchases by the number of unique page views of people looking at sweaters. Okay? Now, somewhat valuable, right? Um, but with custom metrics, it gets very valuable. Okay? And by mixing in product scoped custom metrics, you can not only describe with dimensions all of the information about your products that you're selling, but you can also describe information about, in this case, the transactions that are happening. Right? Um, how much is it discounted for? What is my cost of goods sold? And what is the gross profit? Okay, so what you cannot do and will not work is this. You can't just upload your, your custom metrics, okay? That you can upload custom dimensions that will map, but uploading a custom metric every time the product will view, right, it will add that, it will increment. So every product view, all of a sudden you'll see 85 billion for, int for the amount of profit for a particular thing. It just doesn't work in the product scope. Okay, so it's at point of sale. Um, that um, you'll want to see your profit, your profit metrics, right? Custom dimensions say, show me all views of a product that had, or product lines that had a profit margin of 40% or higher, right? Custom metrics will say, show me my top 10 profitable products, okay? Um, this is basically uh, something I showed last year here, right, that I did with, with custom, custom dimensions on the hit level. It's much easier to do it now on the product level, to have your a profit per a cut off profit per unique page view, right? Uh, propensity to purchase the amount of discounts your, your look to book. Okay, so now we're talking the language of business because we're piggybacking on the the infrastructure of enhanced e-commerce to see the, the funnel of of this options that users had uh, the, that the customer had to their final purchasing decision. Okay, so what are we going to do with this now? Advertise. Right? You change your bidding in your product listing ads. What, are you advertising using product listing ads? Your keyword bidding, right? Or your negative keywords if you see that certain things don't sell well. Um, product placement on category pages. I think this is a lot better for merchandising decisions on your website. Um, and, you know, it's not going to drive your merchandising department. It's not going to be just based on web analytics data, but it's going to be, I think, really enriching. Okay? Now, the vocabulary of enhanced e-commerce is basically saying, did you see or did you add to cart and did you start checking out? Okay, that's the way that Google Analytics does it. But there are other things that you can do in terms of interacting with a product, mostly in terms of research or in sharing, right? So here's um, Zappos. You can watch videos or you can add to your favorites list or share it or review the product or view reviews, and all these things that are also related to the taxonomy of your products are not going to be able to be tracked well uh, at this time because of the issue of product scope. They don't have the language right now in order to do that. So use custom metrics right, to track this on the hit level. Okay? Are people interacting with this product page? And again, I'm going to describe the page, page level custom dimension, a hit level custom dimension. Um, and I really like custom metrics. That's, um, I didn't think so much about them earlier, but now I can see that they, they really open up the GA's data, right? So you can add, let's say, you know, hit level for add to wish list, recommended products who are submitting ratings, and you'll get data like this across your whole product taxonomy. Um, are people adding certain types of products to their wish list? Um, are, they, are they submitting ratings about them? Things that you can ultimately use in creating, you know, remarketing lists and understanding buyer behavior, and, okay? Moving on uh, through the shopping process. So now we've been on, let's say, your category page, your product page, now I'm beginning to check out, okay? So this is a new report in it from Enhanced E-Commerce, which shows your overall shopping, shopping behavior, right? Ads to, these are, 
um, all sessions? Did you see a product? Did you begin to check out your, your checkout behavior? Did you, you're in the cart, did you begin to check out? Did you add your billing information? Okay, now this is not really new, okay, because um, you can do this with horizontal funnels, right? Raise your hand if you already had a goal set or some goals for each of these steps in, in the funnel um, if you're doing e-commerce, okay? Charles, good. Um, for many people, they weren't, right? They just set up one funnel. My goal is a sale, and they maybe set up some sort of funnel there or not. Here you get a broader list, plus there's quick segmentation capability, which I do like, right? The fact that you can look by uh, completion rate through that funnel by device, by user type, or by user level custom dimensions, right? So in this case where male and female is not from double click, it's actually from the users identifying themselves as male or female, right? Or data per first purchase or lifetime customer value. You can segment your funnel in many different ways in a quick, in a quick interface um, which, I think is, which I think is nice. Um, another benefit, um, which a good friend of, me, friend of me pointed out to me last night to include, is the checkout options, right? That if I'm in checkout step three, I can actually see our pe what types of our shipping are people choosing, what type of payment option are people choosing, okay? And this is a a now a standard dimension called checkout options in the different stages. And this is useful because you can see is something broken or how am I you know, my value proposition, you know, the benefit of like, you can get this free or you can get this now, right, in terms of shipping. Um, so one other new thing to th this set of reports is the ability to quickly add segments. You can mouse over and add a segment. I think that's great for adding adoption to the ability to create segmentation for, for companies who may not be doing that e as often because they have to go into the segment builder and build it, which is not so hard, but some people are scared away from that. Here it's like one click and click save. Um, I also use this particular example to point out what I consider to be still a fundamental flaw in the Google Analytics platform is that it is sessionized, right? It's all about what am I doing in this 30 minute session by default um, on the site? And I don't think that that describes how users shop. What does this mean that 219 of the sessions entered during the billing stage in my funnel? What, what is that about, right? As opposed to, you know, many, many other analytics platforms where the denominator is people, it's the user. So the whole concept of, of conversion rate or completion rate of things I really think needs to be on, on the person level, on the user level as the proper denominator as opposed to you know, what's happening within this session, okay? Um, some issues, generally speaking, with this idea of the, the checkout funnel. I said there are a lot of things I like about it. It is rigid. It's talking about the most common use, use case, add to my cart, go through at my credit card processing, right? But that funnel might not be your funnel, right? People can go through PayPal, so they go from the cart, maybe all the way to checkout in one step. Um, maybe somebody logs in and they bypass all those steps, okay? Uh, one of the clients that we did an e-commerce um, implementation, if the person logs in, their whole cart shows up and you can go directly to checkout on a different device. So if I add some things to my cart on my phone, I can go onto my computer, log in, and I just go directly to checkout. I didn't even see products during that session. Okay? Um, refunds. So I don't have any data because I haven't done this for a client, so I, I only like to show things I, that I have firsthand knowledge in. Um, it looks pretty good. Um, there's a lot of it doesn't retroactively process information like anything in GA, and that's terrible. Um, but what it does is that you just use your key of your transaction ID, and you actually see all the products that were returned, right? Um, I was speaking to Doug last night, and, and he, we mentioned follow Vicky Brock, right, from Clear Returns um, on Twitter. She has like a lot of, you know, in the trenches information about like how returns can be really toxic for a business. So it's nice to see this in Google Analytics. You can get reports of which products are refunded, how much, um, you know, the values of your refund reports right there in GA. Okay, moving on to a few other aspects of enhanced e-commerce. Internal promotions, right? You'll see in the top right at the bar, you can actually click on that to, to get, you know, potential gift card of up to $100 based upon a some sort of level of spend, okay? I like the fact that you're able to describe it by an ID, a name, a creative, and a position. What is my promotion saying, right, and where was it displayed? 
So in this case, that same promotion for the free gift cards is actually displayed most, pretty much on category pages and, and product pages. Those are two templates. And we can see the, inf the data around that, that that I highlighted here, the, the CTR, right, that click-through rate of was I offered this promotion and did I click on it, and the transactions per internal promotion click, if you can say that quickly, um, which is also like, is this, am I is helping answer a question, is this a good piece of real estate? Are people seeing it? And are they clicking through to it and, and ultimately using it, right? Now if it's a promotion that has a discount code, you can see that, right? People enter a discount code and you can get a list of discount codes in GA. Compare the purchases of your discounts by average value, um, by, by gross revenue, right? Two things, with average value, is okay, gross revenue I'm not so interested in as a metric um, because it's, it can, discounting can be toxic, right? So uh, a little bit washed out, but you can, like, again, put your profit metrics here. If you're capturing your profit, profit metrics within the context of adding upon um, a pretty robust platform, then you'd be able to, you know, see how much is being discounted and how is that impacting your bottom line in terms of profitability. So. Um, so you should definitely track your discounts and orders, not just in terms of this is how much money I made when I offered the, uh, how much gross revenue I had when I offered a, a discount, but how is that impacting my profitability? Um, and remember product, it's all product based. There's a product scope. So all of these metrics are calculated by each and every, I'm buying a jacket, I'm buying a belt, I'm buying shoes, right? Each one of the things that are being purchased will then add up and calculate these metrics. Um, so if it's an order level discount, right, an implementation tip, what you need to do is take, let's say, 20% off. I, I'm buying something, something for, for $100, I take 20% off. My total basket value, I need to apply that to each one of the products, right? Because in, in my opinion, you're really not buying that product for the product price. You're actually buying that product at a 20% discount like everything else in your basket, okay? So a little bit complicated to set up on the on the server, you can do it with JavaScript too, but it's doable and that's, I think, the best way to apply discounts on the product level in Google Analytics. So as that, for the most part, covers everything within the, the new platform, okay? Um, and one of the few things we've done is like, well, now what? Now that I have this level of data, what am I going to be doing with it? And the answer goes back to just, you know, the traditional job of us analysts is to analyze, segment, right? Drill into it and help both make marketing decisions and merchandising decisions based upon your products. So here's an example. Um, enhanced e-commerce as a default way of segmenting within, within Google Analytics. I think this is great, right? It makes it much easier to quickly say, I want to see anybody who bought a men's jacket, okay? I bought a jacket. Right? The purpose, once you create that, again, for Google Display Network, I can create a, a, an audience list directly in that. I can do, make decisions based upon that, that information or see how people buying different product lines are differ in terms of their acquisition channels. Okay? Even more exciting for me is the fact that bit by bit, uh, GA is moving into the capability of, of doing good um, cross-device measurement. Now, generally thinking, speaking, I rate GA pretty low as a tool in terms of, of doing cross-device measurement because they don't stitch back to the acquisition, which is, I think, the most important part. It's only now that I've identified myself through some sort of user ID, from that point onward, I might be able to stitch these together, right? Or I have to take all the information out of Google Analytics and do it on my own, right? So from a tool perspective, in terms of this report, um, as a ways to go. But if we take a look at just this report, the visibility is already way better than things that were available earlier, right? So like, this is exciting, right? We're getting more and more visibility within this tool um, into true user behavior, right? That's a pretty big overlap of people who used mobile and desktop before purchasing, right? Um, the advanced segment that I wanted to create that the system failed, <laughs> it just, it's just, I couldn't make it work. Anybody else tell me, I think it's just a bug. Um, is did the person have a first touch interaction with mobile? As you can see, the um, revenue from other devices between their mobile phone and then actually coming back on another device and completing their purchase 
is beginning to move. What I would like to know is, well, what are the types of products that people are viewing, potentially adding to their cart, interacting with, researching when they're on their phone, before they come back to the site and actually end their purchase, because that's the true funnel. So if I can get a, an idea about my merchandise, my product categories, the brands of the products I'm selling, right, in relationship between devices, that will direct impact on making marketing decisions about how are you advertising on mobile. Because otherwise you didn't have the visibility, mobile just looked like it was a failure. But here if you can see it in a cross-device manner, you can see that people are researching and these are the channels that they came in from. Right, again, GA is you know, very strong about saying what, how, what's that acquisition source and how did that impact the whole process. Okay? Um, another example might be understanding the user's landing page experience or the user's landing page experience by channel. Okay? So Caleb talked about you know, where's your front door? Right? It's not the home page, maybe it's a blog. Right? If you're talking e-commerce, is the front door through a category page? Is it through a special landing page? Is it through a PPC landing page? Is it through a product page? So here we're looking at product pages from organic search. Okay? Um, so now that I'm looking at that, I can see my e-commerce, enhanced e-commerce metrics of cart to detail rate, buy to detail rate, right? by whatever category level. So my apparel versus ski, I can see that f when people are coming from organic, right, they have a much more propensity to buy for ski. And we can then begin to go further into that analysis. Okay? So to kind of sum up wh what we do with this data, right? We can prioritize our owned, earned, and paid marketing efforts by page type, by product type. We can create meaningful Google Display Network audiences using GA, you can take that segment and just add these things to AdWords one after another after another and create audience lists for the winners and the losers, right? Places you don't want to display your ads based, you know, um, or, or, or that you do. Um, remarketing lists for search ads, currently, um, you cannot set from the Google Analytics interface. Um, re remarketing lists for search ads need to be set with a conversion label in AdWords. If the data that's powering your collection is a tag management system, all that data is there. It's passing through the tag management system into, into your analytics, or the data layer is describing your products, and that's what you're gonna pass through to your tag management system into analytics. So you have all the descriptions of your customers and your products right there in your data layer, so you set tags. You see the information in analytics, and you can fire business-based rules for your remarketing list for search ads, for ad role, for, for anything that, you know, apart from Google Display Network that you can't set directly from GA. So I think that the ability for impression level data within the infrastructure of, G, of GA is, is, is huge. I like the fact that I can send my promotion impression, all the information about the products and the different lists on the page, all in a single page view hit, okay? Um, the product lists are, I think, particularly good for cross-sells, upsells, um, you know, the promotions tracking, I think, is also a very good feature. Um, the merchandising funnel is nothing new, right? There, there is better, the checkout funnel in particular, there's better adoption capabilities now that's added to the platform, right? So I think that that's a plus. Anytime we can get more companies, more marketers, more people, you know, people who may not be like us in the room to be able to use standard reports to, to, to use the data, it moves forward where we're actually trying to go in terms of decision making. Um, Session-based data, meh, right? I don't know if that's ever gonna change in GA because it's so based upon the platform. It's moving slowly, you see more user metrics coming up, like tr number of transactions per user is now a metric, standard metric in GA, so bit by bit, I think that it's just in a cross-device world must move that way, so we'll see where the product goes. Um, the vocabulary of the verbs, that things that you can do with a product are very limited, right? I can pretty much see it or add it to my cart or check out with it um, and, or go through different checkout stages. So use, use event tracking still and you're gonna have to use custom uh, dimensions on the hit level and custom metrics on the hit level or event tracking to, to measure that infra, like videos, views or social shares. Um, the product-based custom metrics to get Profit value, I just love. 
I think that that's really a critical piece. Um, and I, I, wouldn't, I'm, I don't hold it against you know, the GA platform that's not part of it. As Caleb was saying, well, yes it is. It's called a custom metric and you customize it to the way that's important to your business. So as a, as a base, enhanced e-commerce allows you to build upon it in, in a very powerful way as such, okay? Um, and a little bit in terms of those actionable items, I think that the enhanced e-commerce platform gives us a lot of to-dos when it comes to our marketing, okay? Um, product level information is great for PLAs, it's great for your keyword bids, okay? You can really, this is where you're, where you're spending the money, okay? Creating really smart remarketing lists, right? Of by what people are buying, right? Don't just, they were on your site, they bought something, don't just show that same thing that they bought to them on every other website they, they came from. Maybe show them uh, uh, some sort of cross-sell or something that might be more useful. On-site merchandising and on-site you know, promotional information, um, I think are big pluses. And the ability um, to improve your recommendation engine, again, the Chinese checkers example, uh, is, is really strong. Uh, for those cross-sells and upsells, product list data. What are people seeing? What is the messaging of my promotions? What is product messaging that people are seeing? Okay? And so overall, I, I give it a four star. <laughs> Thank you very much.